So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jackie Kali'i A'a. I am your host this evening, the host of Indian Comedy Hour. We have been bringing you brand new comedians to every lineup of the last three weeks. Super excited to entertain you all during quarantine. Um, I am dialing in from oh, yeah. Oakland, California. I am Urington Paiute, Washoe, Native Hawaiian, and Portuguese and Italian on my mother's side. What's up? Woo um, what's up to all my urban Indians in the house? Any urban Indians? Where are you guys at? You guys can come <laughs> And um, <laughs> you can go up some gang signs. Like, let me know you're here. <laughs> let me know you're here. Good, good, good. Cool. Yeah. You know, I'm. Uh, I am an urban Indian, um, but I, you know, I'm a real traditional urban Indian. You know, our traditional <laughs> stories are a little different than some of the ones you grew up with. So, for example, we know the traditional Indian stories of the hilltop uh, Indian bar in Oakland, California. You know, we know the mm -hmm. traditional Indian stories of the Indian guy who got Sunday punched so hard he slid up the wall and back down like a piece of paper. You know, those are <laughs> the stories that we grew up with out here in the Bay Area. Yes, that's where we, that's where we grew up. Um, but also I am a traditional Indian daughter. You know, I always make sure that my dad has everything he needs. He's a 75 year old native elder. Uh, and uh, he grew up during, you know, he was born during World War II, all right? But I keep an eye on him and make sure he has everything he needs. You know, I'll record his movies for him <laughs> on DVR. You know, and I make sure that he has real traditional Indian food. Chinese takeout. That's what he needs, yes. All right, cool. And, uh, you know, I, I am, I'm happy to be able to work from home. Uh, I am, I work for the government because that's what Indians do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I do, I do work for the government and I'm very happy to say that I, um, I'm signed up for the public loan forgiveness program. It's for anyone who works for the government. Uh, you can get some of your student loans written off. If you haven't signed up for it, do it soon. Uh, but I had to call student loan uh, because COVID happening, uh, you know, they paused all of our payments, thankfully, uh, until September, okay? But I had to call in anyway, make sure all the paperwork is going right. And I call in and she goes, oh, you're facing write-off soon. And I was like, really? How much? <laughs> like, oh, you know, the other day I wrote off 85,000 and I was like, say it again, say it slowly. <laughs> <laughs> say it Good slowly. one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, man, I can't wait for my write-off day. You know, I've got a couple of <laughs> some time until then, but I'm waiting for like I'll I'll print it out, put a picture, you know, frame it, let everybody know how much was written off a of Jackie student loan debt, right? And it's so frustrating because all these people think Indians are walking around getting free education. No, I've got the bill to show it. So anyway, uh, but it was cool looking at the registration list, you guys. There's so many really cool Indian names on here. We've got a lot of folks that had it on last. Couple names, I saw many gray horses, awesome. Saw a gold tooth in there, you know. So I think I even saw like a, a spotted wolf in there, something like that. And anyway, we don't have those names. You know, I'm, I'm Paiute and Washoe. We, we don't have names like that, you know. Uh, the names we have, we've got, uh, we've got Tom. Uh, that's, a, that's a name, we've got Dick, uh, you know, and Harry. Those are the, that's the names. Uh, those are our Indian names out there in the Great Basin, the Sierra, Nevadas. Um, no, but really, some of my uh, relatives are dicks. <laughs> hey. Hey, all right, there we go. We're good, we're good, we're good you guys. Come on, get into it. We like it, we like it, we get into it, you know. I know um, Naomi, Dick oh, from wow. InMed. There we go, we got people talking in the middle of the set. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were happy to hear you laugh. We don't need details. But you know, I want to know though, I want to know. We've got the group chat going. So you guys let me know, where are you dialing in from? What part of the country are you in? Like shoot into the Zoom chat here, let everybody see where you're coming in from. What's up, I already see people are using it. A lot, we got someone coming in from, uh, from Phoenix. Awesome, what's up Phoenix? Here we go, cool, cool, cool. Laughter's medicine, so happy to laugh with you all. We got Sacramento in the house. What's up, Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> Los Angeles, there we go, cool, all right, we've got a couple going, yay area, what's up, Northern Cheyenne, living in Missoula, Montana, oh, we have Edmonton, Alberta, what's up, First Nation, how you doing, Navajo Nation, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Chandler, Arizona, Levine, Arizona, 
Laguna Pueblo, what's up, Farmington, New Mexico? All right, you guys, this is awesome. We're seeing people from all over the country. This is amazing. Very, very cool. Awesome. Well, we're going to get this show started. Are you guys ready to hear some comedians, see some comedians? All right. Now we have Wichita, Kansas. There we go. Good. Okay, well, we are going to get started with your first comedian this evening. I'm very excited to bring her to the stage, our virtual stage. She's coming all the way from Los Angeles. She's originally from New York. She's Dakota. She's a contributor at the Hard Times. Please, Make it loud, give it up for Caitlin Jeffers. Thanks, what's up? Um, I, I'm also a city Indian, <laughs> grew up in New York. New York is so diverse that I knew a Native American skinhead. <laughs> I always like in, you know, shows I'll be like, how does everyone feel about that? And everyone feels pretty okay about it. <laughs> I think you all know it's the only race where you can be like, I'm a supremacist and people are like, all right, fine. <laughs> people are cool with that. I actually, I grew up in New York and I didn't ever think of myself as like a minority until when I was in kindergarten, my teacher suggested I tell everyone I'm native as like a fun fact. <laughs> So that's when I realized if your race is a fun fact, you're probably a minority. <laughs> I, um, I was home over Christmas and Mike Bloomberg was running for president and he had all these ads on TV. He had an ad that was like, Donald Trump won't stop tweeting. Mike Bloomberg doesn't even know how to use his phone. And then he would come out and be like, this thing doesn't even have apps. <laughs> Vote for me. Now he's not president. I've been sober for 12 years. Yay. Thank you. So I've been gambling and having a lot of sex. That's what happens when you <laughs> My therapist laughed at that, so I thought I would say it here, you know? <laughs> my therapist is so cool. She texts me emojis. She called my ex-boyfriend an asshole. I told her I had sex in a record store, and she was like, nice. <laughs> you think she'll start a roller derby league with me? I don't know. We'll have to see once all this ends. <laughs> my therapist is cool. I, um, I like gambling. And I realize I like gambling because nobody can hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the only place where I can hurt men's feelings, and they don't ask me what we are. You know? <laughs> where is this going? I feel bad about myself. <laughs> Got thrown out of a casino for playing $15 worth of Smith songs. I didn't know that was a crime. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, I like, I, I get a lot of smart guys and I realize that I think it's cause like, I'll just say every word I've ever heard when I'm flirting with someone. And if you use a word out of context, people think that you're like really intelligent <laughs> and that it's like so deep they don't get it, you know? <laughs> it's not real esoteric, you know? What does that mean? I don't know, but it's gotten me laid a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, is it, like, so this quarantine has been, uh, I mean, you all know, it's interesting, it's different, it's all the stuff. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to start dating again in quarantine. Downloaded a bunch of apps. My favorite app is the Citizen app. If anyone doesn't know the Citizen app, it's this app on your phone where it tells you all the crimes being committed around your area <laughs> in real time too. So if you hear a helicopter or yelling, you can open it and there's like a bunch of narcs live streaming the crime. <laughs> so I like that app. <laughs> I was on it the other day and it said there's a guy with two machetes on Vermont and Hollywood. Oh. I was like, Ugh, I guess I'm not going outside today, right? And then a few days later, it said there was a guy with one machete on Sunset and uh, uh, Western. I'm like, who was that other machete in? Where did that go, right? <laughs> so now I was on Bumble, right? And I was talking to this guy and he goes, uh, I don't like to give out my Instagram because I'm kind of a local celebrity. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, are you the guy with two machetes? <laughs> and he never heard of that guy. So I think he's not actually famous. <laughs> that guy to me is the most famous person in Los Angeles right now. It's um, I, because I grew up in New York and moved out here. The biggest question I get asked is, what's the difference between New York and Los Angeles? Like everybody asks me that all the time. And I feel like now I know the answer, you know, the biggest difference between New York and LA is that in LA, we are worrying about the coronavirus, but we're also worrying about the guy with two machetes. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> um, is anybody here Catholic? Yes. You know what's so funny? Whenever I say that in shows, there is always just one person kind of timidly. <laughs> I'll ask a better question. Was anybody ever forced to be Catholic at some point? <laughs> yes. <More> people. <laughs> more uh, people. Yes. I, um, I, I'm Catholic. And to me, like the worst part about Catholicism, besides like everything you read in the news, is <laughs> you can't throw any of this shit out. Like I had a baptismal candle, you can't throw it out because it's got God in it, you know? You get palms on Palm Sunday. You can't throw the stuff in the garbage because it's like made of God, right? And I had all this stuff piling up for years, you know? And uh, I didn't know what to do with it and I was moving, you know? So I did what a responsible Catholic does. I put it in the trunk of a Toyota Corolla and I sold the car. <laughs> now my aunt can burn in hell that's right i sold it to my aunt i made it her problem <laughs> has anyone ever read the bible it's I, I was thinking about this right the bible is clearly like a group effort because like the old testament that's like something jews catholics you can all get behind right and then it starts to get a little muddy because then it gets into four versions of the same story and you're like okay who was really pushing for their version, you know? And then after that, what is it going to? Paul's letters. If you don't know who St. Paul was, he was like the original spam bot. He would just write all these letters <laughs> to everybody in <laughs> biblical times, and they were angry and judgmental, <laughs> and they just flooded everyone's inbox. If you haven't read it, I brought one. St. <laughs> Paul to the Romans. My BFF died for your sins. But before he did, he photocopied this letter and sent it to 12 of his closest friends and family. The last girl who didn't send this letter forward failed all her AP exams, and her crush moved to Germany never to be seen again. XOXO St. <laughs> <Saint> Paul. <laughs> That's like he even knew he would be a saint. What a jerk. <laughs> um, I work in entertainment. I work on union jobs with art department. And uh, I love it because to union people, I'm young and skinny. If you want to feel good about yourself, work with union people. <laughs> You'll be the youngest, skinniest person if you're under 40. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I'm so young that someone at work thought that I might have known someone in the latest school shooting. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this guy asked me out on a date from work. And we go to dinner and at some point he like reveals that he graduated college in the 90s and i was like i thought you were like my age and he was like i thought you were like 20. <laughs> so that didn't work out <laughs> um and i'll end with this uh so my friend told me that I either look really good for 40 or like a 15 year old that's had a rough life. <laughs> and I thought, well, that makes me versatile. And now here I am making it big in Hollywood before it's too late. All right. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> Yay. Give it up for Caitlin, everybody. Give it up for Caitlin. Woo! Yeah, Caitlin. All right. Hey. Uh, hey. Woo! All right. Uh, added. Okay, enough woos. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, give it to me. Now stop. <laughs> I like control. That's what I like to do. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Caitlin, for, for joining us, everybody. Yeah. I just... Um,
put uh, everybody's uh, Instagram handles for all the comics you're going to be seeing tonight. Please follow them, support them. So, mm -hmm. Caitlin, wonderful to have you on the show. How is hey everything there. going in LA? How are you doing? What's going on? I'm doing well. Um, I've been working from home. I actually am working on a show right now. It's like in a writer's room. I'm not writing on it, but I'm, I'm assisting the writers. And uh, so we've been working remotely since that Very started. Cool. That's good. What do you, um, how do you like LA? I mean, I spent some time in New York City. Everybody always says it's your home once you're there. Do you miss it? What's going on with the LA differences and what it's like out there? You know, I like LA. I, the one thing I don't, I hated driving, but now I'm so lazy from driving <laughs> that I can't not drive anymore. <laughs> So I do. I like LA. I like the weather. I like how there's more space. Every time I go back to New York, it's so congested and there's so many people and it just makes me like more anxious. I hear you, man. There's, there's a lot of folks on those streets. I lived in New York City briefly and just learned to speed walk and then I couldn't get mm -hmm. into my system even after I returned to California for like years. <laughs> We're like, what's the rush? And I'm like, I don't know, life, why, why not? Yeah, really. <laughs> Kaylin, any tips for folks um, to stay sane in quarantine? Anything that's kind of helped you get through this? Jeez. Am I sane? <laughs> Am I staying sane? Uh, I actually, like, when it first started, I get, like, social anxiety. And I was like, this is great, because I'm not socializing, so I'm fine. <laughs> and, um... But then I just like, I was telling my friend, I've just been thinking about everything I've ever done in my life. And I'm like, so like, I should apologize to everybody. <laughs> I'm just like overthinking stuff. Um, so don't do that. I can tell you a bunch of stuff not to do. <laughs> don't go on Tinder. <laughs> um, yeah, I, one thing I was doing was watching the British Bake Off and like, and Instagram videos of people decorating cakes has been like so relaxing to me. I don't know. <laughs> I hear you. I love it. The calming voice, you know, of the, mm -hmm. the, the British Bake Off folks. It's, it's, it's awesome. I, I love it. But I will, I will say there was lots of head nodding when folks, when you were talking about folks thinking about what they've done in the past and how they want to apologize. So yeah. um, everybody feels you on that for sure. <laughs> Any the struggle uh, is real. The struggle is very real. Man. I, I wrote a list of stuff I want to do differently on the other end of quarantine, man. Um, oh, and, yeah. I have, like, exercise equipment. I also had just joined a gym before this, and they, like, let me take a kettlebell and some stuff, and it's been sitting right there <laughs> since I got it. <laughs> and my therapist, we started FaceTiming, and she was like, have you been walking? And I said, yeah, I go for a walk every day. And she's like, mm, maybe make it a run. <laughs> and I was like, God damn. <laughs> so maybe do that. <laughs> oh man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Any other final words or any, where can folks find you? What should they be looking out for to stay in touch with you? I'm on Twitter at Jeff or not. I could type it in the chat. Um, yeah, and I'm working on a show called Rutherford Falls at the moment. It is um, starring Ed Helms. And it's uh, it's going to be on Peacock. And it has, like, a lot of native – it's majority native writers in the writer's room. And it's really cool. My cousin, Bobby Wilson, is a writer on it. How cool did I know he was your cousin? I didn't either until I started a job. And he's like, I'm Dakota. And I was like, I'm Dakota. And he was like, I'm Sissident. And I was like, I'm Sissident. <laughs> He goes, what's your, like, res name? And I told him, and he was like, oh, we're cousins. Because <laughs> I was like, we're probably related. I know my family is gigantic. <laughs> yeah, so Bobby is, and yeah, it's um, Ed Helms is the star. And yeah, it's like a really fun show. It's a great room, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to come out, well, you know, everything's been postponed, so we're not totally sure when it's coming out. But you'll definitely see a push, especially on, like, native Twitter. Awesome. Well, there you go. Small Indian world. You're with your cousin in the writing room in Hollywood. So that what a <laughs> story, right? So you guys, please give it up for Caitlin. Thank you so much for joining us. Yay! And everybody, she's going to put uh, her Twitter handle in the chat window so you guys can follow her, catch up, and see what she's up to. Thanks so much for joining us. Woo! All right. Jeff or not. There we go. 
All right. This is awesome. I, I love that we're doing this show, you guys. And thank you for, we have like, I don't know, 80 people in the room. Hell yeah. Way to go. Cool. Wow. Um, it's so funny that I'm happy to see that folks are jumping on and on board with technology right now. You know, otherwise it's, it can be a weird, a weird environment. Like today, you guys, this morning, my account got compromised. It was, um, it was insane. I don't know what happened, but they, they made me reset all of my security questions. And uh, so I had to answer them. You know, the first question was, uh, what is your husband's middle name? And then uh, the second question was, in what city was your first child born? And uh, the third question was, uh, why aren't you married, bitch? That, uh... <laughs> yeah, so I was, uh, you guys, I was, uh... <laughs> I was beat up by an algorithm today. Uh, <laughs> you know, in quarantine, the patriarchy is strong. This, uh, <laughs> so, you guys ready to keep the show going? You guys ready for your next comedian? Hear it? All right. Good. I'm so excited to bring her to the stage, guys. She's wonderful. We've had a chance to hang out via Zoom um, this last couple days. It was wonderful. So uh, she is an amazing person. She's influenced by all the crazy aunties that have no boundaries. <laughs> You see her in the independent film More Than Fry Bread, and she's also a member of the Ladies of Native Con. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. She's a citizen of the Tahana Autumn Nation in Southern Arizona. Shagirl, give it up for Teresa Chuiwa. <laughs> so, does my time start now? Yep, there you go. All you Man, I'm listening to you guys and I am so fucking low tech fuck technology. That's all I want to say right now. I can't, even, I can't even, you know, distinguish between time zones. I thought I had till nine o'clock. Like, where are you? And I'm like, oh, it's only eight o'clock. Why are you bothering me? I'm trying to digest my food. And holy cow. Okay, and then the bad thing is it's like I don't invest in like I just have my phone, like I don't even have a holder for it. And uh, I was at this, um, this, uh, you know how Indians like free things? Like when you go to these health fairs or whatever, <laughs> and we pick up everything, don't we? Yeah, we pick up all the pedometers, like we're gonna use them, right? We're not gonna use them. We just wanna stick it to the man and get as many as we can, right? If we get it in and we get it lined in, that's what we do. So anyway, I got in line and I got this cool, it looked like, it, it looks like this. And at the end of it, there's little hands and it holds your phone. So I used that on a, a live idea because it worked really good. And so this week I feel really good. And so I was cleaning my house, furiously cleaning. My house has not been this clean in years. I mean, it's still not clean, it's in progress. But it's clean and I can't find the damn thing. I cannot find the damn thing. I'm like, I saw it somewhere. Don't you hate that? That you clean and you push it where they're supposed to be. Then when you need it, you can't find it. Damn. So right now what's holding my phone in place are two rocks. <laughs> one looks like half a brick and the other one looks like an old art. I think it's an archaeologist or something. It's like a metate that we found in the desert. So Anyway, I'm so low tech. And then I was listening to Caitlin. You're so cute, Caitlin. Aww. And uh, about being a Catholic, I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying to return to spiritual, in indigenous spirituality right now. But um, I was in the hospital last year. I broke my back. I slipped in the tub. Man, it fucking hurt. But you know what happened? I figured my back wouldn't have broken if I had an ass, right? <laughs> one, of those, one of those flat ass Indians. <laughs> when I slipped in the tub, shoot, there went two vertebrae, and um, <laughs> if I had an ass, I could have bounced, you know, and <laughs> saved myself. Okay, so when I was in the hospital last year, I probably filled in all my stuff, and um, I, um, I probably put I was Catholic or whatever the preference is that they ask you. Mm -hmm. So this January, I went back in the hospital. I, I have no hair because I have cancer. And um, I had treatment and stuff for some of you that didn't know. And so uh, I went to the hospital again. So I didn't put any kind of religion, but it must be in my records. So, you know, the priest kept showing up. The priest kept showing up or some, some deacon or some nun. They kept showing up, you know. And I was just like, and they're like, oh, would you like communion? And, you know, I just reverted back to, to my Catholic, you know, I was like, yeah, because man, I sure prayed a lot. <laughs> and so when the when the priest came, he's like, 
And he said, would you like to be anointed with oil? I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, sure, sure. Man, I was going through a hard time, right? So I get anointed with oil. Mm -hmm. And so later on when I was thinking about it, because my mind was kind of had this chemo fog, you know, and I was like, was I anointed for healing or did the guy give me last rites? So either way, I think I'm ready. You know, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Watch out. Watch out. I'm ready. So anyway, I'm a little low tech and um man, where are all the your girls at? All the big girls. Man, I select you guys. Man. What really bothers me is to see a native woman with little boobs. I can't see yours, um, Caitlin, but <laughs> generous. You know, because it's kind of sad. You know, sometimes. Anyway, I used to have big boobs and I don't know where they went. I lost a little weight. And I guess that's the first place that they go, you know? Um, that I did a live on Facebook. It was my first time last week. And somebody, one of my, my nieces around there, she was, T, because everybody calls me T or she girl. They're, T, you have a neck. <laughs> it was so funny. Because we give those Indian names out. I, you know, um, there's, I said, well, what did you guys call me behind my back? No neck or what? You know? <laughs> and they go, well, yeah, you kind of like that guy. You know, that guy who has one leg shorter than the, uh, the other? We call him not even, not even, <laughs> which is kind of funny because when you talk to natives sometimes and you try to ask them something and they'll say, not even, that's not true, not even, so anyway, the crooked guy's not even, and um, there's another, another fun name, oh my gosh, anyway, there's just all kinds, so sometimes, anyway, I'm doing, um, I'm doing pretty good now. I think I got like a lot of, um, I got a lot of my energy back. So I'm really happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, I was looking, I made some notes and I don't know. Oh, and I, I love this live stuff, this comedy stuff, because it forces you to be human again. I mean, I had to wash my face, you know, <laughs> and I had to like put a bra on. <laughs> I didn't want to be stepping on my boobs right now because <laughs> gravity is taking its toll and I'm not as young as I used to be. And you can laugh all you want, you young girls, because gravity's going to hit you too. And, you know, um, I don't know, it's kind of cool getting, it's kind of cool um, getting ready for these things. I changed my earrings. I was on the Ungathering show a few minutes ago, so I changed Ooh, my earrings. Are you earrings, earrings, girl? And um, I saw Mark, Mark, you look good. Um, and you're not as greasy, so you must have washed your face after your set. So good for you, good for you, baby, good for you. And, uh, um, and I was just one thinking about, um, you know, all the stuff I've been through. And one of the things that um, Kimo did was took my hair and it also took my mustache. Mm. <laughs> it did. It did. I had a bad oh, mustache. Wow. When my son was 12 and I saw fuzz on his face, I'm like, son, you got a mustache. Looked at me, goes, you do too, mom. And I looked at I sure did, man. The chemo ticket is gone. I'm smooth. Look out. <laughs> you know, technically, Indians aren't hairy anyway, right? We're not. I tell my friends, I don't shave under my arms. There's nothing under there. I, even even between, there's like maybe a dozen, maybe not. I don't know. With chemo, there's nothing anymore. So, you know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> because it's fucking hot in Arizona. Let me tell you, it's hot here. You don't want to live here and be big breasted or even have have gravity take over your breast because you sweat it out down there, ladies. Look out. <laughs> it's not a happy thing, but that's what happens. Mark's over there laughing, he's imagining. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Has gravity taken his toe yet or what? <laughs> anyway, I just I love people and I'm so glad that you got this stuff going on. Um I I just I just have um I just want and the last thing that I wanted to say was um you know um my mom my mom was like the funniest lady ever. The funniest lady ever. I miss her. She died long time ago. Because I'm not young. I wish I was, but not young anymore. That's all right. But I was telling her the story one time. And she was like my favorite. She never saw me do comedy. 
and she, I would tell her jokes, and she would be laughing, and I'm like, Mom, Mom, did you get it? And she'd go, oh, no, no. And it was the funniest thing, so I would have to like, okay, Mom, this is how it, you know. And then she would laugh, you know, and, and I kind of seem to have that weird effect on people. I have this friend, um, that my she's Chicana. And uh, we used to, and I hope she's on. I don't know if she's on. I'm just doing it on my phone so I can't see like the gallery of all the people. And I don't want to be like scrolling, but I will later. So my friend was, was talking, we were talking, we had our desk connected together. And I guess I would make her laugh. We worked at the, our casino. I'm here. And it was, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so she would be there and she'd be, and I'd tell her something. And I guess she was laughing, but she would be like laughing inside. And she, <laughs> I could see her like that. And I, I, I'm not kidding. I think that was her. It was true. And one day she was going like that. that. And then I looked away and I looked at her. She was gone. She had fell off the, her chair <laughs> and she was on the floor in our office, cracking up. And she said to me, she goes, you know, Teresa, she goes, I'll be driving, you know, on the freeway, coming, coming, to, coming to work. And I'll think of something you said. And I'll just be cracking up in my car and you know, I'll be driving by and thinking I'm crazy. But man, if you got friends like that, keep them close. And, you know, mm -hmm. and um, anyway, back to the story of my mom. So I met a lady. I was talking to my mom, right? You talk to your mom sometimes. You talk about everything. You talk about nothing. So her, my sister came in and they started talking about, hey, did you hear Nikki was pregnant? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard it. Did you hear her? Um, her husband Victor ran off with whoever, and I'm trying not to. You know, none of my business. I'm trying not to listen. And, I'm just, <laughs> and then finally, I can't take it anymore. And I said, "Who are you guys talking about? Are you talking about those people from this one village or the Santa Rosa, this other village?" And they both look at me real weird, and they go, "We're talking about Young and the Restless." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to figure out all the she's on the red, you know, mad and whatever. Anyway, but that was my time, so I'll stop right there. And uh, thanks, you guys. And uh, I hope Jackie invites us back. <laughs> give it up for Teresa, everybody. Give it up, give it up. Oh. Hey, Teresa. <laughs> Oh, good to see you. I miss you. Love you. Um, <laughs> friends and friends are jumping in saying they love you, and I got a couple comments saying you're awesome. Yes, awesome. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us today. You're right. I didn't bring out my big old earrings. I decided to wear my little mm. inlays today. So, uh, but you know, you know, I've got more to come. We'll have more shows. I'll make bigger earrings. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? How's everything going out there in Arizona? You you staying uh, trying to stay cool out there now? It's getting hot. Oh my my man my man bought a new AC unit. He put it in the in their living room. It's fucking cold in there now. <laughs> so I'm in the back room right now, just kind of spreading it out and getting warmed up. And um, it, it's it's hot um, right now. It is in the our some of our traditional food is ready to be harvested. So we got to go out in the desert and pick it. So I've been making. They call it choya buds. Their stickers are full of calcium and they're good for you. So anyway, I've been doing that and been cleaning. I've been um been watching a lot of like live stuff, you know, like oh. you know, while I'm doing stuff and so people are talking. So because man, I get sick and tired of all the people around me every day, day in and day out. <laughs> I'm, I'm 57. I've been with my man since I was 19. I'm tired of him. Shit. <laughs> Shoot, we've been married like all these years, almost 40 years. We were like, wow, how do you do that? And I said, people will clap. And I say that in shows, hey, I've been married. They clap and I'll say, don't clap, it's no variety. <laughs> you know? And then like, like, who said they were sober? Was that in another show? Caitlin. Somebody said they were sober. Was it you? Was it you, mm -hmm. Caitlin? I've been sober 35. I don't know, a long time, nice. 37 years maybe. And um, somebody said, and I said, don't clap. <laughs> Come to the president, I fucking need a drink right now. You know? <laughs> 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 oh, I, love to drink. I don't know if that tells you how I'm doing, but I'm all right. I'm surviving. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear you're doing well. Any, um, any tips or advice for any folks listening in who, uh, you know, ways to stay sane during the uh, quarantine? Well, you know, I was, 
on my live and on my Facebook page, when I was going through my dark times of, of um, hospitalization, I had asked people to write to me. And, um, and they did, and I answered them. And good thing I cleaned my house. I found all oh, these stationery and all these cards that I've had for years. So I'm encouraging people to write to me and I write back. And people are, um, people are scared. I had a friend today who wrote that was like hoping not to get depressed. And I don't know, I'm not trying to give her advice, but I am just trying because when I was sick in the hospital, I made a list of things that I wanted to do. And one of them was to be a good friend. Oh. I have wonderful friends and yes. I want to be a good friend. So I want to be encouraging and positive to my friend. And I think if we can do that for each other, that are, we're going to get through this somehow. And maybe, you know, maybe things are going to change. Maybe things are not going to change. I don't know what's going to happen. None of us do because we're not there yet. But if we can look at ourselves and be good human beings, mm -hmm. uh, be generous and compassionate and, uh, you know, natives love to laugh and help each other in the small ways that we can then we're going to be all right we're going to get okay mm -hmm. we're going to be okay that's it i've got one final question for you if you could have a superpower what would it be <sighs> probably to have an ass that i can <laughs> <You have. laughs> <laughs> we're laughing i'm not kidding i'm serious <laughs> We'll give it up for Patrice, give it up for Patrice everybody, and, and let's hope she gets that superpower ass. Yeah. 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 You're awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, awesome. Cool. All right, you guys. You guys enjoying the show? You're having a good time here. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see. I added all the links again for the comedians, so you guys can follow them and stay up with what they're doing. You know, this is uh, this has been really fun getting everybody together, and it's also challenging to have um, ongoing material on my end as the host. So um, I'm just going to throw in one one more thing there. So I'm not married, as you guys know from my attack from the algorithm earlier today, resetting mm -hmm. my security questions. No, but uh, I was engaged at one point in time. Yes, I <laughs> was engaged to an Englishman. Yeah, I was engaged. <laughs> You know, I had my own little Pocahontas John Smith kind of thing going on. I don't know what was going on there, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is like the cradle of colonization, his people, right? <laughs> that's, that's what that was. Uh, but it was interesting because my, my, my future, my former future father-in-law was a huge, a huge Western fan. He loved John Wayne and loved Indians, you know, and like every time I'd go over to his house, he always had a new figurine, you know, there was like the the Indian lady looking on oh, yeah. the distance. Yeah, and then, and then I come over the next week and then this time he's got the bow and arrow guy, you know, off the side. <laughs> next week he's got like a little, like a lady with her papoose, you know, and it's all, <laughs> it's all wrong. You know, there's like, there's like a Osage outfit and we've got like a Mohawk thing. It was just, it was all mixed up, a smorgasbord of tribes, all wrong. And uh, I dawned on me, I was sitting in his house and I was like, oh my God, I'm the figurine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> have to get out, Jackie. That's what, that's what my ancestors were saying. To me. They get the hell out. So I clicked my heels and I got the hell back to Oakland. So uh, that's what I did. I made my way out of the relationship. I mean, honestly, it was seriously so bad, you guys, that I began finding meaning in Taylor Swift lyrics. You know? <laughs> that's when I knew I had to get out. Had to get out. So a little, a little bit of story on my. Uh, making it through hard times. You know, we're all gonna get through this, guys. That's what's gonna happen. But um, I'm excited to share the laughter and to keep this show going. You guys still, you guys still feeling good? Feeling good? Yes. Yes. I'm excited to bring, we've got two more comics left. I'm excited to bring him to the stage. We've got a, a drop in here from a comic that I've seen around a lot and so happy to have him on stage here today and to meet him. He's a, a mix of Mexican, Irish, and Navajo descent. He's been, you can see him on Amazon Prime and he's also on Sirius XM. He has a dry bar comedy special. He also has mid last mm. crisis. Um, please give it up for Mark Yaffe. You guys. Thank you. Oh man, Jack and Caitlin and Teresa, you guys did a great job. And uh, T, just for the record, uh, I didn't wash my face or put on a bra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is time during the COVID. People, people are asking, you know, how do you get used to doing these? Uh, in person, there's non in person shows where you're just sitting in front of a computer and you're performing mm -hmm. in a room full of, you know, an empty room with no people. I'm like, hey, what do you, I've been doing that for the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs>
COVID is crazy though. You think for the first time, Indians don't want to go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay, Grandma. We'll stay here and play Nintendo. You don't have a Nintendo. We'll pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and I know like a lot of people I'm doing everything I can to be safe and maintain social distance. Uh, I haven't showered for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, personal protection. They say that's very important. Personal protection has never been more important during the COVID. I replaced my uh, fiance's pepper spray with hand sanitizer. <laughs> Get to the city, blast them. <laughs> Crime is down, right? Criminals used to say, I'm not afraid to go to jail. To jail. <laughs> COVID is scared straight. Yep. <laughs> it's like the first time in history inmates want to be put into solitary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calling in sick has never been easier, right? <laughs> uh, boss, I'm not feeling good. You know what? Stay home for the next six weeks. <laughs> Holy pink eye. Don't come back till 2021. <laughs> And, and people's buying habits are changed, or behaviors are changing. People are actually buying newspapers again, uh, just in case they run out of toilet paper. But they're buying them. Right? <laughs> I'm hoping this lockdown ends soon, though, really, because I'm running out of all that hotel toilet paper I stole when I was on the road doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we got some parents out there. All the kids are homeschooling now, right? Man, that's uh, the homeschool. My ex and I used to homeschool our kids back in like the early 2000s. And the homeschool was uh, great because, like, one of my kids was student of the month every time. <laughs> and I'll never forget they had their first pop geography quiz. They were fighting in the back of the car, so I kicked them out, told them to find their own way home. <laughs> <laughs> and parents, parents, if you can motivate your kids in homeschool, you can, you you got you got the control in homeschool. I'm like, hey, you want to be on that honor roll? You better get out there and clean that front yard. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get over the home ec room, get daddy another beer. <laughs> I'll be in the teacher's lounge watching TV. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's goofy stuff going on. Man, and uh, uh, since I lost my comedy gigs, I started doing Uber for a few minutes there, right? Uber, uh, that's where, you know, strangers without uh, jobs pick up strangers without cars. Right? <laughs> 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 So basically, in Uber, your job is to pick up drunk people and try to make them throw up on the way to their destination. Because you get like extra <laughs> cleaning fee. Yeah. I'm like, right, why not? My kid used to throw up in the car and I'd clean it up for free. <laughs> Someday Uber's coming out, uh, coming to the res, so I think they're going to end up with Uber Indian, right? <laughs> That'll be a little different than white people at Uber. Like Uber Indian, they might show up like 15, 20 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> Back seat. The driver will hitch up her gas money up front. <laughs> Stop off at the casino on the way to your destination. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if, for those of you not familiar with me, my name is uh, Mark Yaffe. It's in my adopted name, Yaffe. That sounds like Yazi with a lisp. <laughs> yeah, my actual uh, last name, uh, uh, my birth name was uh, Michael Anthony Dauber. You know, so you, some of you might know my parents, Red and Bingo. <laughs> I was not watching, uh, playing Bingo tonight. Like <laughs> and I'm not from the reservation. I'm not from the res. I didn't even go to the first time I went to Navajo Reservation. I was almost 30. I was deer in the headlights because, you know, Navajos are super traditional people. They want to know two things on the Navajo Res. They want to know your, uh, uh, your chapter house and your clan. Like, uh, Mark, to know your chapter house. I'm like, um, chapter 11? And <laughs> <laughs> What's your plan? I'm like, uh, Wu-Tang. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not afraid to say I am not a native, uh, I'm not a native language speaker. I tried to learn Navajo, but that is the hardest language on the planet. The Japanese could not figure out Navajo, and those are some smart people. They helped me pass math. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Dene culture, man, super, super deep on the res. Like one time we were doing a show in uh, Tuba City. We went out for Chinese food. I ordered uh, General So chicken. They bought me General So Si chicken. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
to the Navajo Nation Zoo when I was at Window Rock. You guys ever get a chance? You're on the I-40 going across northern Arizona. You got to stop at Window Rock. Check out the Navajo Nation Zoo. It only takes like three and a half minutes. It is awesome. It's like <laughs> two sheep, a wounded possum, and a bear on layaway. <laughs> but, and it's kind of awkward because I'm actually quartered today. I'm like, duh. Right? I'm, we're like the Rodney Dangerfields of Indian country. Like, no respect. No respect. <laughs> To advance at the power, they said, sit down, our people have suffered enough. <laughs> <laughs> Until Tribal Health asked for a doctor, they gave me a Dr. Pepper. No respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I come from a broken home. Uh, I, had, I, had, I was raised by two adopted parents, and just nothing in our house worked. <laughs> our toolbox is a Donald Duck lunch pail, right? <laughs> my dad, I grew up thinking my dad thought, some assembly required was a direction. My first bike was a unicycle with handlebars. <laughs> My dad took us camping once. He put up a tent. 45 minutes later, it was a mosquito net. <laughs> and this is crazy. You know, uh, I think Caitlin was talking about having parents. That, was it, you talked about your parents in, your, in their 70s? or was that? My, no, that was uh, Jackie, your dad being in the 70s. My parents are 92 and 90. They've been married wow. five years. They've been married so long, their marriage now qualifies for Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say? To death do us part. No, my parents parted when they got the second cable box. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up at their apartment. They were in separate rooms watching the same show at the same time. <laughs> You know, we learn from our elders. I always try to glean wisdom from them. I asked, like, like my mom asked, Mom, what's your secret to a long marriage? She goes, communication. I asked my dad a secret to a long marriage. He goes, hearing loss. <laughs> <laughs> During the Depression, my parents, they did. So like a lot of elders uh, who grew up poor or people who were poor, my parents, they don't waste a scrap of food. You notice that about the elders? They hang up. They, Man, their food. I took my mom out to uh, breakfast a couple months ago. She wanted a to-go box for the parsley sprig and the orange slice. <laughs> <laughs> my parents' fridge is like a food museum. I'm serious. I asked my mom for a, a peach. The fuzz had become a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> now on the bottom, there's a styrofoam box, right? And there's these bamboo sprouts shooting out. I'm like, mom, what's, that, what's in that styrofoam box? She goes, Oh, that's Chan's Chinese Kitchen. I'm like, Mom, they closed down in 2015. <laughs> yeah. Throw that out while you're at it, Dr. Seuss. Get rid of that green eggs and ham. <laughs> Seriously, my parents' fridge would spawn a Dr. Seuss sequel. Right? Candy <laughs> bar, you can't eat pickles from this jar. You can't eat this mayonnaise. It's been expired months, not days. <laughs> but like, as you can see, just one would kill both you and me. <laughs> The meat is gray, the bread is stale. They wouldn't serve this food in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and eat a berry from this basket. You'll be laying inside a casket. <laughs> <laughs> old school parents, man. I, and I don't know if you guys had old school parents. My mom told me this is true. The other day, she was going up. We would take it in the park and on picnic. We would leave you in the car. You wouldn't stir for hours. I'm like, yeah, mom, that's called heat stroke. <laughs> different times if you were raised in the 1900s like me they would we were latchkey kids they would lock us out of the house <laughs> thirsty thirsty would be like find a hose <laughs> you gotta pee find a bush it's like you need to walk it off well my leg's pointing the wrong direction i don't think i can walk that one off <laughs> Not raised the healthiest. Back in the day, our four basic food groups, like powdered, fried, dipped, and battered. <laughs> no fresh greens. The only time we had fresh greens, the neighborhood bully was stuffing grass and leaves in our mouth. <laughs> raised on violence. The 1900s raised on violence. Every adult could hit us. The aunts, the uncles, the teachers. I think the mailman took a couple swings at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we have some of these knuckleheads they, they're proposing to curb school violence by arming teachers to prevent school shootings i'm like i don't think it'll put an end to school shootings but i'm pretty sure it'll put an end to add <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So if you want to terrorize a school now, just show up with peanut brittle. They'll go into lockdown. <laughs> we have a man approaching the office with a jar of Jiffy and a handful of Snickers. <laughs> Evacuate the children to a peanut-free location. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, anyone watching this live stream tonight over the age of 40 didn't have one friend growing up with peanut butter allergy and nut allergy. You know why? Because they all fucking died. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Right? No diagnosis, no treatment. We had to eat everything on our plate. If the nuts mm -hmm. get us the frozen peas, we're going to take us out. <laughs> yeah, food was dangerous back in the 1900s. Cars were dangerous. Anyone own a, uh, your family uh, had a Pinto station wagon? <laughs> Remember that piece of shit manufactured in the 1970s by the Ford Motor Company? No <laughs> for exploding on rear impact collision. <laughs> yeah, great. Guess whose family had the Pinto station wagon with faulty brake lights? <laughs> <laughs> they had my ass in the back as the spotter. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you better step on it. He's coming quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the nastiest bathrooms back in the 1900s. I never sat at a, on a toilet seat in my school. I did the hover maneuver until I graduated eighth grade. <laughs> Cheapest toilet paper. We didn't even have like single ply. It was like no ply toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Serious? And they could have got better toilet paper. They could have spent a little more money. Instead, they got the bigger wheel of toilet paper. Remember that? <laughs> it would be like the size of a truck tire, and then they'd padlock it on. Like, what? I'm going to steal 8,000 miles of single ply toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> And the things we had, the, we didn't have the temperature controlled, 72.3 degrees, hand uh, activated faucet, right? We had like old school, we had level five kilowatt volcano okay, hot on this side, and minus 287 degree Arctic chill on this side. You'd have third degree burns and frostbite at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and the shittiest soap, remember, you guys remember Baracco soap? Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, basically, if you're too too uh, young, too old, or too drunk to remember, um, Baraxo soap is basically uh, sand, broken glass, and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. My hands are clean. Blood and bone. All right, you guys, that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for having me on, Jack. You guys were a lot of fun, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Mark, I had that soap in my school and I talked to a couple of Gen Zers and I was like, oh, you know, the powder salty weird soap. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Everything is liquid. And I was like, okay. that's how I knew we could never be friends. I have nothing to talk about with you unless you've rubbed sand between your hands to clean them. Now, did your school, did your school have the, the regular paper towels, like hand crank, like the Model A, or did you have that big metal box with the cloth loop? Remember that? Oh, the, I do loop the cloth loop. loop. The bacteria <laughs> belt? Oh, my God. <laughs> Pick a germ, leave a germ. We did end up having a little crank uh, when I finally was in towards the older years of, of uh, elementary school. We had the crank. So we had that one. But uh, so how's everything going for you, Mark? How's it out there in Nevada? I'm locked up. I'm locked down. Man. But you know what? I'm, I'm really lucky, though. My fiance and I just bought a house. So at least I got a backyard. You know, I got out of the apartment and was like, man, I can I can breathe. I can walk around and and yell at the grass and the frogs. And I got a little pond, so now I'm trying to become a pond whisperer, you know, frog yeah. whisperer, whatever I'm doing. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Good, congrats on the house, awesome. So I've got a couple of questions for you. What is the most annoying habit a person can have? The most annoying habit a yep. person can have? Uh, besides talking during a comedy show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, people, people don't, make me too upset i used to i thought you know because i worked at dmv for seven and a half years so i pretty shot every annoying habit there was people would everybody would lie about their weight you couldn't lie about your age but everybody <laughs> lied about their weight, right? <laughs> i used to i used to mess with people one time i'd say yeah step and step right over those red dots to get on that scale and we'll get your picture I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you trap them that's unfair man as someone who's lied repeatedly on my license about my weight i don't appreciate that <laughs> I <should. laughs> <Trust> me. yeah <laughs> Um, any any tips you got for folks to stay sane and and uh, stay stay upbeat and get through this? Oh man, you know, keep that Netflix Netflix bill paid. You know, the, <laughs> the 
power can go out if you got a generator or you can plug in your name <laughs> so you can survive but uh you know what the, the, the beautiful thing is uh thanks to technology we got access to a lot of on online learning and comedy do something different you know try you know, try some if you haven't been musical try some music if you haven't ever written poetry try some poetry if you haven't done comedy uh don't waste your time it's there's too many of them. <laughs> uh -huh. no whatever your pursuit um and if you get bored you know i i got uh i got my laugh with mark website they can always go on there i got videos and um uh, I do a podcast now. I started this podcast recently called How Does That mm. Happen? I interview like uh, a world, unusual world record holders, like wannabe or should be record holders. Like I just interviewed this guy last week. Uh, it'll be up probably a couple days named George Hood. The guy planked for eight hours, 10, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Oh my God. I yeah. explain for eight so hours, long. 15 minutes and 15 seconds. He's 62. Mm. So I mean, yeah. And then I, I am oh, a lady, mother of four, that uh, ate 575 wings. And <laughs> oh, my mom. You don't want to be those kids when she gets home from that competition. Mm. <laughs> where folks find you? Where should we stay up with, uh, to keep up to date with what you're doing, what you're working on? Uh, my best spot is uh, Laugh with Mark, L-A-U-G-H-W-I-T-H-M-A-R-C.com. My parents couldn't spell. So laughwithmark.com, that links to my uh, YouTube channel, Twitter, all that good stuff, Facebook, my podcast. And uh, I really appreciate you having me on. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Mm. Thank you so much. Please give it up for Mark, everybody. Thank you. Um, all right. All right, you guys. This has been really very, very cool. I um, have to say I love getting all Native folks together. One of our biggest challenges um, in Indian That's comedy is that everybody's everywhere. And so it's hard to to get everybody on a central spot. So in some ways, awesome that we're able to go virtual now because we've had a lot of comedians from all over the country participate. It's it's really great, you know. And per performing here in San Francisco, I get a lot of uh, weird comments after shows. But, but recently, um, earlier in January, I had a lady come up to me after a show, and she was like, "I too am Native American, <laughs> Cherokee." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were part of our sisterhood you know what i mean <laughs> wanted a secret handshake <laughs> and i was like no. so then she just gave up and she drove off in her jeep cherokee <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is awesome this is awesome you guys i want to know uh we're gonna keep the show going we got one more final comedian to join us this evening. So excited to bring you to the stage. Before we do that, I want to see what nations are you guys repping? Go ahead and let us know what nations you're from. It's always fun to look at the chat after and find out what who's who's checking everything out. We have Walpi, there we go. What's up, April? How you doing? We have Tahona Autumn Nation, Muskogee, what's up? Urington Paiute. Hey, that's my sister. Uh, Hopi, Kewa, Pueblo. Uh, let's see, let's see. We've got Washo, Navajo Choctaw, Navajo Choctaw. Mm -hmm. All right, Saginaw, Chippewa, Turtle Mountain Band. Okay, Raider Nation, uh, someone put, I don't know. <laughs> uh, win, lose, or tie, Raider till I die. Just kidding, they left, they can uh, suck it. Uh, all right, Yakima Nation. All right, Turtle Mountain, Ojibwe, and then Minnesota. There we go, cool, awesome. Well, it's wonderful to see all the tribes repped. Um, Isaiah's, Isaiah's mom, Navajo Nation. What's up, Isaiah's mom? Hi. Yeah, there is. Hi. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Uh -huh. Your son's very funny. Um, Thank you. Ekma Autumn and Pikosh. Okay, cool. See, yeah, I can't pronounce everything right, so I'm going to try. You know, we're just <laughs> trying. I just, it's so funny when I see like an Indian person who's got like, you know, a, a real long, long Facebook name, and it's like, that guy's name is Greg. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 You know, he's got like the syllabary, you know, he's used, he's not even using the English anyway. All right. <laughs> What's up, standing rock? And then I just have someone who did a little dance, you know, and someone's doing a smiley emoji, smiley emoji nation. There we go. Cool. Pasquayaki. All right. All right, you guys, thank you so much. We've got our final comedian for the evening. Are you guys ready to see our final comedian of the evening? <laughs> Woo! Yeah! 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 You know, it was a little, it was a little low. I mean, you know, she came, she's coming from, she, she paid a lot of gas to get here. You know what I mean? Like, we've got a, we've got a, 
Snake in a medicine man. I'll give you guys a look. Snake <laughs> there. You see him? And he's a slut. Excuse me. I'm just laying there wishing for your auntie to. She didn't even want me to come on here with you guys. That's why I was coming out of this. Because your auntie was busy. Oh my God. Ah, your auntie was hooking up. And if you have your kids with you, I'll tell you that. I'll use a baseball term. Your auntie wasn't on first, second, or third base. It was home runs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know your auntie. Uh, but anyways, I've just been taking... And Taboo, he's a medicine man. That's why I have this fan right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get him over there. <laughs> but you know your auntie's a slut anyway. That's why you came on here. <laughs> wanted to hear what your auntie had to say. <laughs> your auntie is crazy like that. That's why I am. You know what, you guys? I need these bars to open back up. Because that was your auntie's prime time. Right now, I was just now waking up. Because I stay up all night. And then I, I, then I am sleeping all day. Yeah. So you know what I learned? Everyone's trying to learn new things. So your auntie learned how to make her own moonshine. Yeah, auntie's going to get a drink right now. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have your drink, take a drink with your auntie. Then you could say, What did you do last night? I drank with my auntie on Zoom. When I buzzed up, my glasses will be coming off like this. And I, when I start snapping my fingers, that's when you know. Get out of the room. She's going to grab hair and fall backwards. <laughs> out. <laughs> That's what they always used to say about me on the res. Anytime I would show up to a party. Beatrice is here. When she drinks that vodka, don't go by her. How come? I'm telling you. Right away, she'll grab your hair and she won't let go. Nah. <laughs> you know what they did? They tested me. As soon as I got that vodka, gee, your auntie just was grabbing hair, just. She tested me anyway. She wanted to test your auntie. <laughs> she was on an old carnival ride. I tell you, your auntie had just had her all over. <laughs> <laughs> One time, how you guys are story. One time. <laughs> oh, wrong side. <laughs> These are too fancy for your auntie. I like smoking those regular cigarettes, and I couldn't find them. <laughs> Myself some air. I'm kind of out of breath right now because I'm not in shape. But you know what? Quarantine, what's going on right now? Oh, fuck, I would be in shape. I'd be in real good shape. I'm a night rider. You know what that is? 
I took her on tears. I ride at night. Yeah. <laughs> you get it, you do. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> you think that you're born again virgins. <laughs> you know what, your auntie, I sneak men in right here. <laughs> Officers, the correctional officers like to tell the pit boss, and the pit boss likes to tell everybody. So they'll fucking know you when you get in jail. You want to kind of fight, kind of fight them off. Kind of. 
like that kind of put on a scene too never know my viral on the internet never know so you make sure you fight don't be just letting them take you just waiting there that's how some of you are you just wait go ahead and cuff me because you're scared of the cops don't be scared of the cops <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've been doing to release my anger some of you are angry you're sitting there just fucking pissed looking at me just not me. <laughs> I'm here just to argue can't she hear us fucking don't like auntie beatrice so i just want to fight her argue her call her down to the weeds <laughs> so you came on here just waiting for me <laughs> You're just waiting and waiting now that you have me on here, just glaring at me, sitting there. You even have your mic on. God, not even funny. Oh, she's offensive. Like, fuck, I don't like her, but I really like her at the same time. Like your ex, you didn't like him, but you really liked him. Like that. <laughs> or her. <laughs> yeah, if you're wondering about my earrings, Teresa, could I see you looking at them and you notice they're not matching? <laughs> no way! That's what happens when you run out, when you go run in, when you run out of your snake's house. Yeah! Don't wear high heels. You'll get caught. That's my auntie. Where's her flat shoes? I don't try to impress nobody. Nobody! Oh, sorry. I'm mad at you. No. Yeah. <laughs> your aunties when I act up, kind of traumatize some of you. You guys heard that? Kind of got triggered, like. They <laughs> 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 ever tell you if you gargle your moonshine that you get drunk faster? <laughs> I try not to take too many drinks, you guys. I don't have that much left, you know. I kind of want to share it a little bit with my snake there, that Maybe. medicine man. <laughs> your aunties don't care. I was chairman hopping, now I'm medicine man hopping. <laughs> Your auntie has it like that. Oh, like, she had, like looking at my mouth. I'd let you guys look at my mouth. <laughs> hey, not even talking, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> jail you guys and none of you none of you wrote me none of you put me <laughs> on my card couldn't even get couldn't even get any twinkies couldn't get nothing because none of you you all act like my friends but you don't even like me um, <laughs> except for this one guy you know what there's always that one guy back in high school writing me in old English. I can't even read it. You have a crush on your auntie. Holy shit. But I look forward to that mail. I don't even like him, you guys. I just used him. Just write me those letters. Yeah. Draw a picture of me. Yeah. So he did. That's the only way I survived. And others I wasn't getting no love because you know what? I'm crazy. So they're just putting me in isolation all the time. That time I made a new CD, I'll be coming out with an album, the Auntie could release and ah! see? Holy shit. If that hurts your ears, that means you're blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Does that hurt your ears? <laughs> Holy shit, you guys, I'm sweating in here. I'm not even in Arizona either, but your auntie just <laughs> look at my glasses are just slipping down. That's how you know your auntie is getting drunker and drunker. You better look out. I might start verbally abusing everybody, but to get me off of here. <laughs> Hurry up and get your auntie off because I'll end up somehow a complaint will be signed on me. Pretty soon the cops will be coming through that door behind me. I think that's enough for you guys for now because you guys are just no. liking. But I got, my back is hurting. My crack is hurting. I kept to bending over like this. I'm not going to be getting nothing. I'm, I'm, my back is... I need to sit up. <laughs> but that's that. That's all I have for... Oh, yeah, hold on. 
you know what? Hold on, I want to tell you guys one more thing. See this right here? Holy shit! They sent me this. I said, "What is that?" When I was in jail, this is the only thing I had. Cause you know what? My cousin gave me this. Cause I, I fought, I beat, I beat this girl up for her. Cause this girl was always picking on her at her job, and she couldn't fight. So I had to come in there. I had to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I had to kind of sock her up, kind of just in the thighs, had to bust her up in the thigh. If you ever want to bust, beat somebody up, but you don't want them to tell on you, you can just hit them in the thighs. <laughs> you can bust. It's an old Indian trick, but never mind. Anyway, my cousin, she gave me this toothbrush. She took the top off like that. She gave me a new one. She said, what's this? Because you know what? Sometimes I brush my teeth. I just like this, you know, put toothpaste on it. Good as new, you know? Here she gave me this. And she said it's a three in one. Ah, three in one what? It's a toothbrush, see? <laughs> Fucking shank. Look at that. <laughs> a vibrator. See the end right there. <laughs> Make you guys smell that, but you can't. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey, I'm done now. <laughs> and there's my number for who wants to ever want to snag me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. 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 <laughs> so many claps, so many, everybody's making lots of comments. I saw lots of, lots of this going on, Tanya. A lot of love. <laughs> During your performance, that was so fun. Hello, Tanya. Thank you so much for doing the show. You guys are doing our love. Yeah. 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 Good job. Thank you, yeah. sisters. Love you. Love you, Tanya. <laughs> Love you, Auntie. There are lots of tears. People are, people are crying. How are you, Tanya? How's everything going? Good. Just staying busy. Um, uh, my partner and I are doing a morning coffee on Facebook every morning. So uh, it's just a live. We go live and we, we have coffee and we sing and we visit and we talk about uh, cultural teachings that we learned. Um, so that every day is keeping me busy, but um, other than that, just trying to, for real, stay in shape, and for real, I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 so riding bike and just trying to, like, stay active, stay outside, and um, to relieve stress, that's my, my best way is to be outside. Good. So you guys are holding up okay. Happy to hear. Um, so I've been asking kind of off questions, and I want to know, like, what's the strangest dream that you've ever had? I had a dream I was a dolphin before. <laughs> so like we're all like a whole group of people were in a line and we're standing on the beach and then one by one they were jumping in and then pretty soon I jumped in and I could feel the water on my face and in front of me was dolphins and I was a dolphin and pretty soon they were jumping and I was like oh are we gonna jump? Pretty soon we're jumping out of the water and then we went back to the shore and then we walked back out like like this. Wow, that's oh, that's oh, that's wow. That is so cool. <laughs> Tanya, it's been wonderful. We had a chance to chat this week. Uh, you're yeah. an awesome person. You've got a really positive energy. Um, oh, do you have any, yes. any advice or tips and tricks for folks to stay sane during these times? Um, I would, my, my, I guess what I do is I listen to a lot of audio books. Um, oh. um, I have a group of supportive sisters um, that I, reach out to frequently especially being a the woman of the household and um you know I think we have a big role and a lot of times like everyone is depending on you the kids you know your other half and um sometimes that can be like very stressful and you need to take time for yourself and um center yourself ground yourself remember to get out outside and get exercise if you don't like to exercise at least walk outside remember to meditate and if you're like how do you even do that? Like, just focus on your breathing. Just inhale positive, out, out, exhale negative. Remember to laugh. These things are great to be joining in on. Watching live, just like Teresa said. Um, remember, 
um, that you come first when you wake up, pray for your spirit, your mind, and your body. And then before you go to bed, remember to pray for those same things because I think in this um, society or even growing up traditional, or even if you didn't, like we were taught to be selfless. And I think that the script needs to change and we need to start loving ourselves and thinking about ourselves and filling our own cup before we can help others and especially being comedians. And I thank every one of you for being on here. I, I loved every one of your sets. And if I had it on mute, um, you better believe I was in the bathroom laughing. <laughs> um, I'm really thankful for all of you um, for including me and um, or including auntie. <laughs> but, um, and every one of you who came on, I really appreciate you guys for taking time and being supportive to all of us and taking time to listen to all of us. Um, this has been a beautiful um, time for me to be able to find myself and to be able to come like this. I, I usually don't when I'm anti Beatrice. I, um, but now that I'm doing this morning coffee on my, my Facebook, um, it's helped me really be comfortable with myself and coming out and making people laugh. And, um, and so I just encourage everyone to just really work on yourself, self-development, self and then your spirit, like remember to take time to, um, for your spirit to pray for it. Cause we're just always told do the physical, you know, work out, exercise, but we don't, you know, how us Indians heal, we heal from inside then out. So we got to start with acknowledging, grounding our spirit, taking care of ourselves that way first. Beautiful. So beautifully put. Now I'm, we're, I'm curious, how can folks keep up with you and keep up with any projects you're working on? What's the best way to, to stay in touch with Tanya? Joe Hall. <laughs> um, you can, you can, uh, I'll be on, I'll, I'll be on Facebook, um, Instagram, Snapchat, Beeble, YouTube, eh, Beeble. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, for, for sure, Instagram, Facebook, and, um, Snapchat, I'm on all those. And then I have a website, www.tanyajohall.com. And I sell my merch on there. Otherwise you could just like hit me up on my email. If you just want to, um, uh, I've been, I've had a lot of people emailing me and just telling me how, uh, I'm sorry if I cut out, I guess you, you, you're welcome to email me too. People have been emailing me and telling me how the coffee show has been helping uplift their spirits. And, uh, and so I appreciate that too. And I read, read a lot of emails. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. You guys, please give it up for Tanya and Joel Hall and Anthony Yay. 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 And then you can add your email in there and then any um, website so folks can get it in the chat. Um, okay. so thank you all for joining us. That's our show. Um, I went ahead and added um, an, all the links. And then if you, um, a lot of folks uh, gave us some donations via the Eventbrite link. If you have not had a chance to donate, um, you can go ahead and do the tip jar there. It's uh, the Venmo and all the money goes to the comedians who perform. So um, please uh, get a add to that. It helps um, a lot of folks, a lot of our performers are not able to perform right now. So this is really helpful to, to help them pay their bills. And, and um, we just wanted to share with you all some good medicine. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. And um, also, uh, any, any, I see little snaps and stuff. Go ahead and do a big round of applause. Applause for yourself. For joining oh. in. There we go. And I've been watching a lot. There's someone at a campfire right now. Is there someone from the campfire? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, there's a campfire <laughs> going on. I think someone's doing beadwork. Uh, we've got oh, someone. Oh. Like, there was someone. Oh, look at there. I don't know. There's some flashlights going. We got, hey, what's going on over there? Check that out. This is beautiful to connect with people. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, this is beautiful. So, <laughs> someone's cooking food. Someone's yelling at their children right now. They're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, for disciplining your children in such a sacred, good way uh, <laughs> to be uh, yelled at sometimes. They deserve it, I promise. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you, guys, everybody. Um, comedians, go ahead and hang on a little longer so we can do a quick debrief. Um, we'll keep you posted on the next show. You'll be emailed. Um, please, again, um, send any um, tips or anything to Venmo. I'll make sure it all gets distributed out to the comedians tonight. You guys have a lovely night. Stay safe. Stay sane. Um, hopefully we'll see you all soon.